<laughs> Very pleased to have uh, the newest member of the House of Delegates with us, Rob Krupika. Uh, he's been elected uh, to the 45th district seat that uh, has parts of Arlington, Alexandria, and Fairfax. Uh, well known to the city of Alexandria as a city councilman since 2002. He is a communications and business strategy consultant and uh, was very involved in the transition of the financial sector to online services. Uh, Rob was appointed by Governor Kane to the Virginia Board of Education after helping to create Virginia school readiness standards, and I know we'll continue to work on educational issues, and let us hear from you as to what your plans are for the session. Thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a great thrill to be here. It's also wonderful to see so many friends in the audience. It's nice to come into a room and see a lot of people that you know and you've had a chance to work with over the years. And I look forward to working with the folks that I, I haven't had a chance to do that with yet. Uh, I'm thrilled with your legislative agenda. Uh, I, I, I don't have any concerns about supporting everything in it, and I'm looking forward to working with you on that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what I'm going to focus on uh, and try to mix it up a little bit since I'm the last person <laughs> speaking. Uh, everyone's talked about uh, how important it is that we improve our voting process in Virginia. Uh, I've got a few bills in that regard and I'm talking to uh, some of my colleagues about some alternative uh, uh, ideas as well. But suffice it to say, I just think it's uh, reprehensible that in Virginia or anywhere you have to wait an hour, two hours, three hours to vote. Uh, and we need to be we need to be looking at our voting system at, at, as a service to the voters. How do we make it as convenient as possible for them, as opposed to how do we make it as difficult as possible for them? So I'm I'm hopeful we can we can find some ways to to accomplish that. On Medicaid expansion. Uh, I feel very strongly that this really is an economic or business issue. I think uh, Delegate Hope made a great case for why it's an uh, important values issue for the state, but I'd actually argue it's also a really important economic one. Uh, we spend uh, millions of dollars every year in Virginia on people getting their basic care in emergency rooms. Uh, and the idea that we could provide coverage for everyone in Virginia uh, is, is not uh, I think a negative economic question. I think it's actually a really positive one because I, I think if you put the numbers together, you're going to find that the outcome is uh, pretty good. Pretty good business. So I, I think it makes makes sense on uh, moral grounds. I think it also makes sense on business grounds. And I think we need to look at it that way. Um, it's it's not a surprise that education would be a big part of my focus. Uh, I've been on the State Board of Education for the last uh, four years and have done a lot uh, as it relates to early childhood education around the country. Uh, I think one of the biggest deficiencies in Virginia's future opportunity is the fact that uh, based on the income of a child's parents, we can very accurately uh, predict how well they're likely to do in school. Uh, th this has nothing to do with the capacity of these children to learn. It has nothing to do with the capacity of them to succeed in life. It has everything to do with the types of services and programs and infrastructure we have to make sure they are fulfilling their full potential as human beings. And uh, I think we need to set a high bar for what we expect of our kids in this state and what we expect of our teachers and our schools. And I think we have to make sure we are giving our schools the tools they need to ensure every single student, regardless of where they start, can be successful. So I'm going to be bringing forth a number of bills. Uh, quite a few of them focus specifically on that achievement issue and how do we take kids who uh, currently are underperforming in our schools and give uh, some paths toward greater success. Uh, I, I really think it's a, a moral issue. I also think it's a clear economic one. Um, Alfonso talked about uh, the average age of uh, the Latino population in Virginia. Uh, we need those students to graduate, go to college, and become productive members of our economy. And we're not going to do that if, if we don't make uh, that a high priority in our education system. And I'm going to close uh, with the, the last issue I'm going to work on that's already been mentioned, but I think it's a really important one. Uh, when the derecho hit in the summer, uh, my district has a number of uh, assisted living facilities, senior nursing homes, that lost power. And when they lost power, they um, had very rudimentary backup systems that provided barely the basics to keep the facilities operating. And the result of that was we had people who were frail, uh, elderly, uh, in facilities where the average temperature was 80, 90, 100 degrees. 
And the challenge that posed for those citizens was pretty significant, and I think we have to address that by requiring uh, those facilities to provide the backup generator systems necessary. Uh, there was also a real community um, safety issue because, because of the severity of the problems there, we had to divert all of the resources we had in that immediate response to that disaster. We had to, con we, we had to all those had to focus on those nursing facilities first. So anyone else who had an emergency in the surrounding areas um, couldn't be served because appropriately we had to make sure we were dealing with the fact that these facilities didn't have backup generators. Um, so it has an effect on the lives of the folks living in that facility, but it also has an effect on the safety of all of us around here. Um, that's the kind of thing that I, I think uh, is important for us to make a difference on, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you, and, and thanks for the chance to be here.